Hey, welcome back to the channel. My name is Justin, and in this video, I'm gonna be showing you what's in my sound bag. I've been doing photography since 2018, but in the last two years, I've recently been doing more wedding videography, which is a whole different beast on its own. I started out with a Tascam DR10L and a Rode Video Mic Pro Plus on top of my camera, and those got me through. But recently, I've really been wanting to elevate my production quality, to get better audio, and to just do a better service overall when it comes to my videos. So that's really where my focus on audio started. I wanted to get better quality recordings for my wedding videos, but I realized if I went a little bit further, I can do other stuff, such as location sound. As I was putting together my location sound bag, I found videos like these really helpful because I didn't know what I didn't know. So looking up what's in my sound bag videos helped me find brands that I never knew existed before and helped me see how people operated and what equipment was actually useful and what was just fluff. So I hope you find this video useful and it helps you put together your sound bag. The first thing we need is somewhere for our audio gear to call home. This right here is an Orca bag, specifically the OR30. I went for a bag that was bigger than what I needed for my mixer. This is because I want it to grow into my bag and also I want extra space to kind of move things around. I noticed on some other videos that people were really compacting their bag, like everything was super tight, squeezed, which is fine when you're trying to save space and weight, but I needed more flexibility on my routing and cables, and I wanted to be able to make sure that I could take the stuff that I needed with me. So as you can see here, it has a bunch of space on the inside that I can put cables, my mixer, and any other accessory that I have here. So this bag has a lot of potential to grow with me, and that's something that I liked about it. So I've noticed something that people bring up relating to the Orca bags, is that they're very long from here to here. That extra width, could be something that prevents you from boom operating through somewhere or just sticks out more than you'd like it to. I think this is a great bag for taking my audio gear with me. I don't find the extended width a problem because I want to take stuff with me. So for example, when I use my sound bag, I take it to a wedding and I place this right next to a DJ board. I ask permission to tap into their board and get a signal out and then I can keep all my cables, my XLRs, my mixer, my battery in here. So the extra space of the Orca bag helps me take more accessories with me. So if I wanted something that sticks out a little bit less than the Orca, I'm definitely gonna check out some of the KTEX Stingray bags. Those are also dedicated sound bags. And I think having a variety of bags to choose from, to choose the one that's right for the occasion, is a good thing. So odds are, I'll also add one of the KTEX Stingray bags to my gear. For now, the Orca OR30 is my sound bag that I use. And while yes, I found the price of the Orca to be really expensive at $350, I still believe in buying quality gear once, and that way you won't have to upgrade multiple times, and you gotta think about it. Like, you're putting a mixer in here that could be worth $1,500, $3,000, $6,000, so why would you wanna cheap out on something that holds your very expensive equipment? So I think the price of the Orca is very well justified and worth the investment. On the Orca, it comes with this shoulder strap, which I don't recommend that you ever hold your sound bag like this. Put a lot of strain in your neck. If you are gonna carry it around, I think that having a messenger style bag for a little bit makes sense. I don't think you should be carrying around your sound bag like this all day long. You're putting strain on one side out of your body. So that's why we'll talk about a solution to that later. Something that I really like about the Orca bag is that it has a lot of zippers, access points, and overall, this is just a very accessible bag. You can always get in and out but usually once you put your mixer in here and you have all your audio gear wired the way you want to, you don't want to be taking stuff in and out. So that's why being able to open almost every side of the bag is super useful. This little plastic thing right here is a rain cover and I like having it on there on the bag so that way in case I ever get caught in a little bit of drizzle, I can go ahead and put this over the bag and help protect some of my equipment. On the sides, we have these little holders that I put my transmitter receivers there and in the front, I like to put my wireless body packs on these, so I just clip them on on the front right there. The Orca or R30 comes with this pouch here at the front, and the Orca bag is actually modular. So if you wanted to switch this out, you actually can buy a different one and place it there. But I really like the one that the OR30 comes with. This has plenty of space to keep accessories, such as lav mounting accessories, batteries, and anything else I need to carry with me. But I like this pouch a lot, and I think it's very useful. And with the rain cover, you can see how it still leaves a lot of room, so that way you can still reach into the side and adjust settings on your mixer. So overall, I think the Orca OR30 is a really neat package 
that has a lot of built-in accessories and flexibilities and allows you to just do your job better and transport your sound equipment safely and securely. So on that spot where the rain cover originally was, you can notice two hoops. These are optional hoops that you can use to carry around your boom pole, but I like to just carry the rain cover there because I don't have anywhere else for the rain cover to fit. And I think it's handy to just have the rain cover rolled up and held on by these right here. So that way it's always there when you need it and you don't have to scramble in case it starts raining out of nowhere. Now that we've talked about our sandbag, let's talk about the heart of the bag, our mixer. The mixer of choice that I went with is a Sound Devices Mix Pre 6 II. The reason I went with the Mix Pre 6 II is because I am just starting out with my audio and I'm primarily a wedding videographer. So as a wedding videographer, it doesn't make much sense for me to buy something like the Mixpre 10 II as of right now because those extra features and extra ports are just something that I don't need. Usually when I'm at the weddings, I ask for one line out from the DJ board sending the mix that the PA speakers are sending out. And if I'm lucky, I get to plug into their wireless microphone receiver. These usually have a quarter inch TRS cable, which I can then use that to tap in. So I can get the PA speaker feed and I can also get a clean non-mix, meaning with no music, feed of the wireless audio. So right now I'm holding the Mixpre 6.2 in my hand. What I have here on top is a small rig V-mount battery. This battery is super cool because it has built-in inputs and outputs that helps me charge the battery and plug other things into it to power them, such as the Mixpre. The Mixpre comes with an included USB-C cable and I run that from the small rig V-mount battery into the Mixpre 6.2 to continuously power it. The other thing sticking out of the mix pre right now is my Sennheiser Wireless G4 512. That's being used right now to capture the audio of me talking at the moment. I really love how small and powerful this mixer is. I think I got into the audio game at the perfect time where technology has advanced to where technology like this is super accessible relatively for the price. You know, stuff's still expensive. And I can go ahead and pick one of these up and get such great results and that they're easy to use. I absolutely love my Sound Devices mixer and I would buy this a hundred times over. So now we're gonna go ahead and take our Mix Pre 6 and we're gonna put it in our Orca bag. So now I'm gonna go ahead and place the Mix Pre into my bag. But as you might be able to tell, it's recording right now. Something that I really love about the Mix Pre series is that you can go ahead and disconnect the power accessory, and you don't have to worry about your device powering off because on the back of the Mix Pre 6, there's actually a battery slit that holds AA batteries, and that can act either as your main source of power or how I use it as a backup or to allow me to hot swap batteries as I record audio. That's super cool that the Mix Pre can switch between its battery sled power or external batteries and it does it instantaneously so the device doesn't power down whenever you switch batteries. So I'm gonna go ahead and place it into the bag. So then I'm gonna feed my Sennheiser G4 through a side pocket so that way I can have it in this holder right here. All right, now we've fed our receiver through the side sipper on the Orca. So now I'm gonna go ahead and return that V-mount battery to the mixer. So this is the small rig V-mount battery with the included USB-C cable that comes with the Mixpre 6. I find that the small rig V-mount battery at 50 watt hours is just small enough to very easily fit on the back pouch of the Orca closest to my body and it doesn't poke out at all and it's a perfect fit. So this is a super nice accessory to cut down on accessories, dongles, and adapters. It has the USB-C port built into the V-mount battery itself and that just makes it so easy to power the mixer. And as you can see, the USB-C cable that Sound Devices gives you has a lot of length to it. So I've actually rolled it up and made that length to have a little bit of flexibility in case you need to move stuff around but it's a lot of cable that comes with the mixer. And just like that, we are now running the Mix Pre 6 with an external battery without having to turn off the Mix Pre or restart anything. The quick and easy power switching between the battery sled and the external power from the Mix Pre is such a nice professional feature. I absolutely love it. And the second most important thing that goes into my sound bag is this. This is a technical sync timecode generator. This allows me to sync hours of video and audio without any problem, it's instant. The technical sync box sends out a signal that tells our devices the exact hour, minute, second, and frame. So that allows me to instantly sync things in post-processing. So I don't have to worry about doing clap tracks 
to sync out my audio and then use the waveform to sync them up, I can perfectly sync up everything using a technical sync box. One really cool thing about the Sound Devices Mix Pre 6 2 is that it has a built-in timecode generator and it's super accurate and it can hold timecode for up to 24 hours without drift. So my timecode workflow looks like this. I set the Sound Devices Mix Pre 6 as my master clock. So what that means is that I'll have the Mix Pre 6 generating timecode and then I'm gonna use this cable that came included with the tentacle syncs to take that timecode signal, pass it on to this one, and then using their app, I can then go ahead and synchronize all my timecode devices from the signal that I got from my mix break. That's pretty cool. And after I've synchronized the timecode between my mixer and the tentacle sync, I can go ahead and unplug this and plug this into a camera. And that's pretty much my timecode workflow. It's very easy once you get the hang of it, and these are worth their weight in gold. I can tell you how much time they save, especially if you're doing multiple takes or multiple short clips and you're matching up audio, it's instantaneous. It's so cool. You have to check these out if you haven't yet. So if we're working with audio, we need a way to monitor our audio. These are the Audio Technica M50Xs, and I use these to monitor the audio coming out of my mixer. I really love the way these sound, and I think these do an excellent job at helping me monitor my audio. So my Audio Technica headphones, I then have this coiled cable, which helps me have a lot of give whenever I need to move around away from the sound bag, or if I have the sound bag on the floor and I want to stand up and monitor it and set something else up, I can put the sound bag on the floor and still comfortably stand up because of all the extra length that the coiled cable gives me. The next most important thing in my bag is going to be batteries. So these are the Panasonic Interloop Pros. I absolutely love how long they can power devices for. And with being rechargeable batteries, I love how I can invest into these batteries and just recharge them. Powering the Mix Pre 6 with AA batteries isn't ideal, but you could do it. But the Mix Pre 6 burns through AA, especially on the four battery caddy. I do have the eight battery caddy for the Mix Pre 6, but I found that this was, you know, kind of redundant. The, I didn't know that the Mix Pre 6 would already come with a battery sled, and I thought I needed to buy all these accessories separate. But if you check on what comes in the box, the Mix Pre 6 already comes with a battery sled. So the eight battery sled could be useful if I really, really need extra backup just in case I think I'm gonna have an extra long day and the V-mount battery won't get me through, I'll put on the eight battery sled and just have that extra power in there just in case. But again, the battery holder, I absolutely love it. I can go ahead and put the batteries in here and if I shake it out, they don't come out. So they're in there pretty good. So I've been talking about the Sennheiser G4 a lot in this video and those are these guys right here. So this is a receiver and transmitter pair. They're body pack transmitters, so it means that you can put this comfortably on a person. And there's a lot of ways to mount these onto your talent or whoever needs to put these on. And I absolutely love the Sennheiser G4 system over something like the Rode Wireless Pros because these operate on UHF or ultra high frequency. And in a nutshell, that just lets me put these on different channels of frequencies that aren't being occupied. Let's say I'm downtown and there's a lot of Wi-Fi in the air. The Rode wireless system is not gonna perform very well and might cut out a lot. With these, you can tune to separate channels and check the one that works the best. So that way you always have options to pick the cleanest channel and that could be the difference between being able to transmit audio and being SOL or so out of luck. So I have two channels of Sennheiser G4 512s. These are a very good value when bought used. I don't think you should buy these new. You can pick some of them up used for almost half the price. I got really lucky with mine and I managed to pick up two channels of Sennheiser G4 512 wireless, including the really nice Sennheiser MKE2 lav mic. So I got a steal for these. For the price of one brand new, I got two used. So now this is how I will be traveling with my Sennheiser wireless transmitter packs and receivers. I got the receivers on the side and the transmitters up front so that way I can easily pull them in and out of the bag and have easy access to them. And then what would be a professional without redundancy? So I have two channels of wireless that I absolutely love using the Sennheiser G4 512s. But then I also have a Sennheiser G3 100. And this is my backup unit in case something goes wrong with these right here. Hopefully nothing ever does, but you never know. So that's why I have a backup unit of the Sennheiser G3. These are a little bit less customizable. For example, on the Sennheiser G4, you can customize the strength of the antenna. 
you can choose between 10, 30, and 50 milliwatts. So that's just how strong the signal is gonna be. And I believe on the Sennheiser G3, it's only stuck to 30 milliwatts. So I always have a backup just in case my two dedicated channels for some reason aren't working. Another use for this backup set of Sennheiser G3 wireless is that I can then use this as a camera hop, meaning that I can take the audio from my mixer, take the signal out into the transmitter and then put the receiver on a camera and feed audio into a camera. So that'd be another way to provide an extra service to your client or to myself. But usually I find that the time code solution using tentacle boxes are more than enough and eliminates the need to have a camera hop from my mixer into my camera. But overall, just have backups. I can't express this enough. Backups, backup, backups. And if the backups fail, I have another backup. So I hope it never gets to this point. But if my Sennheiser G4 512s are failing me or something happens and I need to get the job done, I have a Sennheiser G3 transmitter and receiver pair. And I also have a backup of the Rode Wireless Go. These obviously operate on different frequencies. This is 2.4 gigahertz and this is UHF. But still, I have two backup channels of wireless. Also, I've tried using the Rode Wireless Go as an IFB or a camera hop. It works pretty okay as a camera hop, but for an IFB, it's terrible. This does not have enough gain out for most headphones to be able to listen. The Sennheiser G4 that I have here in my bag works excellent as an IFB because they have a dedicated headphone jack, so that way you can change the volume and easily listen in. The Sennheiser G3 receiver doesn't have a dedicated headphone port like the G4 does and only transmits a mono signal. So only one of your headphones will have audio and the other one won't. All right, so we have our two channels of wireless. And now to talk about the most fun part of audio for me, and that's gonna be the boom mic. So the boom mic, I don't really use at weddings, but whenever I'm doing ENG or electronic news gathering or any sort of boom operating work, I absolutely love getting to work with a boom mic. So the boom mic that I use is right here. This is the Sennheiser MKH-50. I think that this has the best sound for booming indoors. And the overall consensus that I got when I was researching my sound bag was that this is a very first good general purpose microphone. It excels in indoor situations, but if I needed to go outside, I could. And I've done that in the past in some of my videos here on YouTube. And the price for this at $1,400, does hurt a bit because that's the same price as my sound devices mix pre six but you gotta think about it these are so well built and once you have one of these unless you slam them on the ground and stuff i've heard and i've read very great reviews of people saying that they've used these for years they do really well in humidity and that they just keep going and going so now that we have our microphone how am i going to utilize this so i use this when doing my eng work so i have my two channels of wireless and my boom mic here so now that we have our boom mic, we need a boom. For my first boom pole, I have the DD Microphones carbon fiber 8.5 feet boom pole. I absolutely love this thing and it was my starting boom pole. So this boom pole is really nice when I'm in really small spaces or maybe when I don't need a lot of reach. But if I was just having this boom pole on its own, I quickly felt that I needed a much longer boom pole because sometimes if they're filming a wide shot or anything like that, I can't exactly, you know, be in the shot booming because my boom pole is so short. Right now I have it collapsed, but I'll show you that I can extend it out. So as you can see, I now have the Deity Microphones boom pole extended. At 8.5 feet, I think this is a pretty good boom pole in small spaces or if I don't need that much reach. Something I noticed about the short boom pole is that I gravitate to a wider grip when I'm boom operating. So I kind of lose quite a bit of distance to have my preferred comfortable grip. And if I need a little bit extra length, I can go from here, which is kind of my cozy spot, to this right here, so I can have a little bit of extra reach and then have a closer grip on my boom pole. Overall, I'm a big fan of this boom pole. I really like the way it feels and handles, and I don't really have many complaints. So that right there is a DD Microphones carbon fiber boom pole, and that's my choice for short boom pole as of right now. So I've been talking about how that's a great short boom pole. Now for my long boom pole. This is my long boom pole, and this is gonna be the Ambient Quip Pole Slim. So you might notice that there's a bit of a difference between the DD and the ambient. For one, the ambient is almost just as tall as me when it's collapsed. That's because this is a 17 foot boom pole and it extends really, really far. This is a more premium and luxurious boom pole when compared to the Deity for several reasons. For one, the carbon fiber here doesn't flex as much as the Deity whenever I have it fully extended with a decent load at the end. And two, 
The build quality here is just phenomenal. The twist locks on the DD aren't bad, but the twist locks on the ambient boom pole are absolutely divine. The knurling on these locks is so good. So this thing is very, very nice to work with. I absolutely love using this boom pole. And here at the end, I also have one on the DD, but now I'm gonna talk about it. It's going to be the ambient quick release. This allows me to easily switch out microphones without having to screw on or off microphones. That saves so much time, helps save my equipment because you don't have to risk threading these on wrong by accident. You just twist the lock and put in your microphone. Another thing I love about the ambient is just chunky, just chunky little stopper here. I absolutely love this thing. It feels really secure, so I feel comfortable putting my boom pole on the ground when I'm resting. So overall, the ambient is just such a really nice boom pole. So I've talked microphone and boom pole. So how about we go ahead and put a microphone on a boom pole and I can show you what that looks like. This is my preferred boom pole shock mount. It's gonna be the Sonella 063 for the MKH-50. And I think this is absolutely incredible. It has a built-in XLR cable to help isolate it even further away from that cable noise. And overall, I think this just works phenomenal. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this on easily with the ambient quick release tip. Look at this. Look at this, look how easy this is. Just put it on there, release, and boom, just like that. What's that? I need the longer boom, okay. You can go ahead and twist that again. Boom, in seconds, that's so nice. So now I'm gonna go ahead and put the Sennheiser inside the Sonilla 06. And just like that, we've mounted our Sennheiser MKH-50 onto our Sonilla 06 shock mount. I think this does an absolutely fantastic job and I love this product. And just so you can see what I'm doing off camera, I'm gonna put my boom pole onto this C-stand with a boom pole holder. And I'm gonna use that to sustain the boom pole for the rest of the video. If you're gonna be working with a boom mic and a boom pole, or just a microphone like this in general, you need to have these. What these are, are these gonna be protectors for your microphone to help keep wind off of these. So right here is the included windscreen that comes with the Sennheiser MKH-50, and it's super easy to put on. Same thing with this one. This one's just a lot thicker. It has fake fur and foam that helps keep the wind off. And this one right here is the Bubble Bee Wind Killer. I absolutely love this one for using it on the Sennheiser MKH-50. When this one wind protector is not enough, I love using the Bubble Bee to go ahead and put that on my Sennheiser MKH-50. And that really helps cut out the wind noise from my microphone. But normally, if I'm in a situation like this indoors, I just put on the included foam windscreen and that is fantastic. All right, so I have my boom mic here. How about we go ahead and set this up so you can hear what this sounds like. Up to this point, you've been listening to me on the Sennheiser MKE2 lav mic going into the Sennheiser G4 512. Now let's see what it sounds like when I plug in the Sennheiser MKH-50 into my mix pre-recorder. All right, now I have the Sennheiser MKH-50 boomed above me. What do you think? Can you tell the difference between the Sennheiser MKE-2 and the Sennheiser MKH-50? Let me know. All right, so right now we have our essentials. We have our two wireless channels and we have our boom mic. From there, everything else just kind of supports all these essential accessories that we've talked about so far. A supporting accessory that's very important is your XLR cables. That's a given, but the more important part is the quality of your XLR cables. If you cheap out and get an Amazon Basics XLR cable, odds are it's not gonna be very good. It will transmit audio, but you have to worry about things such as interference. If these get caught up in any sort of interference, you could get some weird noises in your signal path. So make sure that your XLR cables have these things going for them. For one, that they are shielded. What shielded means is that it'll help protect your cables from radio frequency interference. Radio frequency interference can actually play a big role in how your XLR cables sound. So make sure your XLR cables that you pick are shielded. From there, the second thing you wanna be looking out for is the connectors. You wanna make sure that your XLR cable has a Nutric connector on it. These are very high quality. These connectors are the same ones that the Sound Devices Mix Pre 6 uses on the receiving end. So make sure that your XLR cables are shielded, balanced, and have a Nutric connector. If you have all those things, you should be set. From there, a supporting accessory for your wireless transmitter packs are gonna be straps. Straps help you place your wireless transmitters on your talent or actors or whoever needs them. For example, there's waist straps, ankle straps, and chest straps. Right now, I have my Sennheiser G4 on an ankle strap. My Sennheiser MKE2 has enough slack on the cable that I can go from my chest down to my leg, 
and I think that's the best placement for it right now in my current outfit. So these are a must have. If you're gonna be mounting wireless transmitters or recorders on somebody and their outfit doesn't have any pockets or places for you to tuck a transmitter pack on, these are so helpful to have on you. Never sleep on these and try to get good, reliable ones. A brand that I recommend are gonna be the Ursa straps. They make the thigh strap that they really like and if you need different placements, Viviana makes ankle straps and chest straps. Check those out, but make sure you don't skip out on them. These are kind of expensive at around $40 for one, but I promise you that you don't wanna skip out on this part because if you have a client and you mic up your client with a cheap body strap, they're gonna feel it and it's not gonna be a good feeling. So don't cheap out on these because your client will be directly interacting with this. Another really helpful accessory that I have in my sound bag is gonna be this cable right here. This is a stereo Y splitter cable. So what this is gonna do is that this is gonna allow me to take both of the signals from my receivers and then put them into a stereo headphone jack that's in my sound device's mixer. How that works is that the sound device's mix pre-6 can take the stereo channel and turn them into mono channels. So that way you have the access to the fifth and sixth channel in the mix pre-6. Channels one through four have their own XLR and quarter inch input. But for channels five and six, you can use them by taking this stereo Y splitter cable and then plugging in something like my Sennheiser wireless transmission packs into these. And that helps me free up some XLR ports if I need to do that. So this is a very nice accessory to have. So now we've gotten to what I think is a really, really fun stuff. Right here, I have my lavalier supporting accessories. So I have a bunch of different clips, tape, and anything else to help take my lavalier and place it on my talent. This is super useful because sometimes you might not be able to put a clip on someone, so you'll have to stick it. Maybe the type of sticker you have isn't adequate for the wardrobe. There's so many scenarios where you could show up to work and you might get an absolute curveball tossed at you and you need to have different ways to mount your lavalier microphones onto your talent. So anything from regular clips to special hypoallergenic body tape, I have all that and that's actually my favorite part about sound. I love the challenge of making lavaliers sound the best they can and I like the puzzle of figuring out how to mount lavaliers onto people. It can be pretty challenging at times, but there's a lot of great resources out there onto what you can do. So I have anything from Rycoat stickies to Bubble Bee fur to Bubble Bee tape to Ursa tape and just anything in between. My favorite brand so far has to be Bubble Bee. Just because of these rubber clips that they make that helps you easily put your lavalier microphone into them. And then from there, it's a pretty much a cakewalk putting them on your talent. So I absolutely think you should give them a look. But overall, just find the things that are right for you. Maybe you could be good just with the included lavalier clip that comes with your lav mic. But me personally, I like having options. Quick pro tip, you can actually stop by any medical store such as Rite Aid or Walgreens and pick up some of these. This is gonna be 3M, Next Care, and Transport Tape. This is absolutely fantastic. It's hypoanagenic and helps mount your lavalier onto your talent. From there, the second thing I recommend is gonna be this. This is called Moleskin, and the brand I recommend is Dr. Scholl's. From there, you just cut it up into whatever shape you need, and it's so easy to mount your lavaliers onto your talent with these. So if you don't have a specialty audio shop near you to buy brands like Ursa, Bubble Bee, Rye Coat, you can just go ahead into a Walgreens or Rite Aid and find some 3M Next Care or Transport Tape or some Dr. Scholl's and you can easily mount your lavalier microphones onto your talent. From there, I have this. This is the Viviana bag small and I keep my lavalier microphones in here. I have two Sennheiser MKE2s and then I have two backup labs. These are the ones that come with the Tascam DR10 and they're, they're backups, you know, they, they do their best. And right here, I have the microphone for the Rode Wireless Go. It's gonna be the Rode Lavalier Go, and it's okay. It's not the best things in sliced bread, but it's there as a backup. In the future, I do plan on investing into some DPA 4060s or some DPA 6060s. They have a micro dot connector, which helps you adapt the lavalier to whatever connection you need. So right now, if I bought them, I would need a 3.5 millimeter locking connector for Sennheiser. So let's say I get my sound devices A20s. I can then take my DPA 4060s, screw off the 3.5 millimeter locking Sennheiser connector, 
And then I can take a new micro dot connector for three pin Limo. So that way I can buy these lavalier microphones and they hopefully last me a really, really long time because I don't have to keep buying new microphones with new adapters. I can just use the same lavalier microphone that has a micro dot adapter and that's pretty cool. After the XLR cables for my boom pole, I have this. This is a coiled XLR connector that I use it to bridge between my mix pre and my boom pole XLR cable. The reason being that I don't want the boom pole, which is gonna be moving around, to be directly connected to the port on my Mix Pre 6 II. So then I use this as a relief because I can bridge my Mix Pre 6 with one input, and then on the other end, I can have a super flexible XLR cable that's hopefully allowing a lot of relief on that port. Using a cable like this will allow me to have a bunch of slack and hopefully never put any strain on the actual XLR port itself. From there, an extra cable pouch that I keep inside my Orca bag is gonna be the Matt Johnson and Condor Blue Collaboration XLR cables. This is something that I keep in my sound bag for when I go on weddings. This has a bunch of different connectors, so that way you can always plug into the DJ soundboard. This has a quarter inch, an RCA, and an XLR. And these are long enough to where you can run a cable right next to the DJ board, but if you needed more length, these are pretty short. But I still like the flexibility of being able to have different connectors in case the DJ is using up all their XLRs or all their quarter inches, and maybe all they have is the RCA. Well, I have that. And that could be the difference between capturing audio and not capturing audio. So this just kind of made it a really nice and easy package to get all those cables in one. You could buy each cable that you think you might need a la carte, but I just found this super easy. So shout out to Matt. Not sponsored by the way, I think this is a great package for anybody just starting out on audio or someone that just needs a one and done solution. All of the cables that you need for your weddings will be right here. This right here has to be the most important part of my entire boom operator kit. This is the Orca OR40 harness and it helps you spread the weight of the bag on your hips and that really helps out. When you're carrying the bag for long hours, if you just had it around your neck, you are going to be in so much pain and that could cause a lot of problems for your health. Same thing if you have it messenger style. And with this harness right here, you can carry the bag comfortably for longer. So I have the harness placed on me right now and it's really cozy. I've taken the time to adjust it to my body because the harness at first does take quite a bit to set up and get cozy with. But once you get it set up, it's super nice to just be able to slip in and out of this. And the best part is that now you don't have to deal with that shoulder strap around your neck or just going around one shoulder. Now the weight is evenly distributed around your body. So earlier I was talking about how people say that the Orca sticks out too much. Well, this is what they were talking about. When you're having the harness on your body, the Orca could prevent you from squeezing through tight doorways or just make it difficult for you to move around on set. I think that the Orca for me right now is working just fine. But later on, I do plan on getting a slimmer KTEC Stingray audio bag, and that will be added to my kit. So it's always good to have flexibility. I think the Orca is really nice to help transport more accessories and stuff like that. This is what I would look like with my two channels of wireless and my boom pole. So I really like the way this feels. It is cozy. The Orca OR40 is doing a good job of distributing the weight of my mixer. So whenever I'm booming like this on a small set, I try to take out all of the non-essentials like extra XLR cables, extra batteries and stuff, and I place them on a Pelican or a bag off to the side. If I'm going somewhere and I know that I won't have access to go back and forth quickly and I need to change batteries out on a transmitter pack or my mix free, I'll keep my batteries in here. The harness does help with the weight, but I still try to make my bag as light as it can be. So this is what I would look like if I was boom operating on an ENG type project. I would have my two channels of wireless and my boom mic all going into my sound device's Mix Pre 6. And this is why I feel so comfortable with the Mix Pre 6 as of right now, because I only need about three channels. If I had gotten something like the sound device's Mix Pre 10, I'm definitely paying a lot of money for XLR channels that I'm not using now. So the extra money that I saved by going with the sound device's Mix Pre 6 II went to other supporting accessories, such as this boom pole, my microphone, and anywhere else. And my latest idea for managing my cabled boom was to have a carabiner with a Velcro loop to hold my excess cable on the outside or inside of my bag. So in case I need to extend my boom pole or need more cable for reaching up higher, having the Velcro outside like that helps me easily reach into it. And if I'm doing a walk and talk and the cable is smacking against my bag and creating noise, I can easily just take the same cable and put it on the inside of my sound bag, just like this.
All right. And just like that. All right. And just like that, I've extended my boom pole out to its maximum of 8.5 feet. At the very end of my boom pole, right there, closest to the first and second segment, I have bongo ties holding down the XLR cable to hopefully reduce cable noise as it comes into the Sonilla 063. That's why I really love this setup because with the Sennheiser MKH-50 inside of the Sonilla 063, the built-in XLR cable on the Sonilla helps isolate the MKH-50 from cable noise. I still take precautions to prevent more cable noise from traveling through my XLR cable on my boom pole by tying it down with some bongo ties on the last two segments of my boom pole. And then if I need more cable, I just twist it around my boom pole and look, just like that, I'm fully extended out on 8.5 feet. So this is what the MKH-50 sounds like on the Snella 063. That's wind noise right there. If you're cooing quickly between actors or talent, you can definitely cause some wind to come into the microphone. Right now, there is no wind noise coming in, but that right there is wind noise. And that's because I'm moving the boom pole too quick. But if you need to cue that quickly, the included Sennheiser windscreen might be a little bit too thin for you. With pretty steady cueing, good technique, you can get pretty good mileage out of the included windscreen. Now, I'm gonna shake the Sonella and see if you can hear any handling noise. I think that's pretty solid. I couldn't hear anything. That is so good. And for example, I'll now switch from the Sonella onto a regular microphone holder. Now I've taken the MKH-50 out of the Sonella 063 and I've put it onto a regular microphone holder that came with the Sennheiser. And this is what the handling noise sounds like. I mean, you could do it, but you would have to be like extra careful. Even just moving your hand on it transmits everything up to that microphone. And I'm touching like the very end of the boom pole and it's still traveling all the way up into the microphone. And now let's switch back to the Sonella. All right, we're back on the Sonella and let's hear this. Definitely a lot less pronounced on the taps. And as I'm cueing it on the microphone stand, you could definitely hear the friction between my hand and the boom pole versus right now, I can't hear that. And that's why having a good shock mount is so important. And that's what's in my sound bag. If you found this video useful, consider leaving a thumbs up. If you wanna see more videos like this, consider subscribing to the channel. My name's Justin and I'll see you in the next video. See ya.